and he took him into the studio and he said, Mr. Percy Edwards, ladies and gentlemen, all the sound was really pissed off. <laughs> Mr. Edwards will now do something on a microphone for us. <laughs> and that was it. Percy went round out and said, I'm the alien, you know. Anyway, we should start okay. talking. Yeah. Um, to promote my, my new book, hopefully, yeah. called yeah. Forgotten Hills. Oh, you're being relevant now. Yes, I, I am. Yes. <laughs> I'm bringing it around to the sensible bit now. I do apologise. <laughs> well, not the sensible bit, the fun bit. And it's basically a, a, a book I've been trying to sell for 14 years. And Justin and the Unbound Boys, God bless them, have finally said, yes, we'll do it. Yeah. Do you remember that, the, that it, dinner party that yeah, I was at? Yeah, uh, people, uh, p previous publishers, objected to forgotten heroes. So mm. they, they were saying, well, well you know, if, if they're forgotten, there's no, no, no publicity in it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no audience for them. So How wrong they are. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> yes. We, you know, we were talking about people who dropped off the radar, weren't we? Like yeah. Arthur Haynes, mm. who was oh. big. Yeah. And you say Arthur Haynes now, and people yeah. go, ooh. Yeah. But why is it people like Arthur Haynes, who's a <coughs> massive star, Charlie Drake as well, another one, and people like Morecambe and Wise and Frankie Howard are still relevant, still, still about, celebrating, yeah. but those guys aren't. What, what, what I don't know what it is, whether they're... You can't say they're of the time, because Arthur wasn't sort of no. topical yeah. or anything. Yeah. He's very Tony Hancock in a way, but he's very of the yeah. working class man, wasn't because he? Because Arthur was the blueprint for Alf Garnet, yeah. Yeah. Johnny Spade told me, because Arthur's yeah. angry tramp in yeah. a raincoat with a hat, sounding off about everything to yeah. Nicholas Parsons. Yeah, yeah. Johnny said that was the yeah, template yeah, for yeah. Alf, because he said, I always wanted to write this bigot who sounds off about everything. Yeah. yeah. So that was the early stages yeah. of Alf. Well, there's all these people. I mean, uh, the idea is it's going to be like 100 and 120 people who, who were famous in yeah. their day and are now forgotten, inverted yeah. commas. Well, so it's, it's yeah. a fascinating People game, can yeah. sit around in pubs and say, I remember him. Yeah. I mean, uh, Arthur Haynes was the guy who used to do the... Uh, the no, it's uh, Harry Worth. Oh, that's Harry, Harry Worth. Worth. He's yeah. another one. He's another one. Yeah, Massive absolutely. star. Yeah, people yeah. go, who? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. I was saying that it, it's not quite the same. I was saying to Robert that when I was at Bristol Comedy Festival, I did a sort of evening with Kenny Everett with a load of clips. Oh, yeah. And some of the young ones in the audience afterwards said, never heard of him. He's brilliant. <laughs> They'd never heard of Kenny ever. Right? See, that, that worries me because yeah. no, Kenny was, was the, the middle of my generation. You know. He's not repeated on no. terrestrial no. television. Yeah. But he's got a very, I told them. There'll be a second volume, the next generation of forgotten yes. heroes of comedy. <laughs> he's got a very angry protective sister in Australia, oh, Kenny. Yeah. He thinks she wants to celebrate her brother, but she yeah. clamps down on anything you're trying to do. Yeah. And then does someone, like, someone like Doug Fisher. Who was a mate of yours? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Doug, yeah. Best known now from Man About the House. He played Larry in Man About the House. Yeah. But he was at Oxford with you and Mike. Yeah, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, he was the he directed the review uh, that I was in for. Oh. Um, <laughs> for Try and write that down. Yeah, <laughs> and appeared. <laughs> yes. Appeared at Danny LaRue's club. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because Danny saw him in yeah. the show, from, yeah. and uh, Doug was yeah. thrust into this nightclub yeah. show, yeah. Mm. and uh, one night. Heavy name drop. Margot Fontaine came in, and I thought, Bounce. "Oh my God!" Yeah. I'd written it, and uh, Danny was playing Margot Fontaine, <laughs> and Ronnie Corby was playing Nuriev, <laughs> and he was playing Nuriev as a, a rampant queen, yeah. and Danny was playing uh, Fontaine as a rampant nymphomaniac. Yeah. And I thought, you know, very subtle stuff. Yeah. And she loved it. You get, I'll get to the point. I'm being okay. ready. <laughs> and uh, she said, "I want to book." The club, Danny, one night. Mm. He said, Oh, darling, we don't do one nighters. And I mean, then he thought Tuesdays are not very clever. <laughs> and Nuria from Fontaine and the Australian Ballet Company, who were doing Raymonda, they all turned up that night. Right. And I found Doug Fisher spoke Russian. Oh, really? Okay. So I said, You introduce it tonight, Doug. Right. So he wrote himself a little bit, and I'm lurking by the dressing room door. And the atmosphere was electric. You know, Fontaine and Nuria, if Nuria English hadn't come along too far at that point. Mm -hmm. Doug went on and did what apparently was pure filth. <laughs> and <laughs> Nuria pissed himself laughing. And uh, then it started, and the audience were laughing at Nuria laughing, but they don't know what Doug's talking about. Mm -hmm. Then Ronnie came on and did something. The audience laughed, and the man next to Nuria went, No strange, you put it up here. Then he laughed. <laughs> and the audience laughed. We were getting three laughs for every joke. <laughs> Whenever Danny That's said fantastic. anything, the audience laughed and the moment the street and would take you. I never forget that night. Dear Doggy did it yeah, in Russian for yeah. me. Yeah. 
Brilliant. Well, he's in the book, folks. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah, please. I mean, I mean we've got to talk about how this all started. Because it was around, I think, like 1998, 99 time. And I was around your house. Yeah. And you were playing some 78 records, one yeah. of whom was Ronald Franco, wasn't it? Yeah, no, that, because I, I was, uh, when I was at school in the 50s, 60s, I was collecting uh, old musical uh, uh, 78s and uh, uh, musical performers, and one of which was Leslie Cerrone, yes. who appeared in uh, Terry Gilliam's a uh, short that he did along with the meaning of life. Um, oh yeah, the crimson permanent assurance. Per yeah. Assurance, yes. And he he's one of the uh, the, the, the the slaves working in the, uh, the insurance company, and uh, and I I had to go up to him and say, I've got your records, <laughs> Leslie. I, I'm such a fan. You know, I'm such a star. Because uh, he did uh, things like uh, come and have a cuddle on the common. Come and have the cuddle on the common on a nice summer's day. Now, the vicar down at Bray gave a talk the other day to the lovers in the village congregation. He said, if you can't resist from the art of being kissed, please accept this little invitation. Come and have a cuddle at the vicarage, and of course I shall be there. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> One of his cleaner ones. Yes. Yeah. 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 I've got a, what we used to call you know the cassette you used to put in your tape recorder. That I've got thing, Fartology. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. And Leslie Cerrone, which is hilarious songs. It was the two Leslie's, wasn't it? A, as well, a, a then, study of yeah, farts. Yeah, yes, yeah. it's yeah. wonderful. Genius. Yeah. The other, the other one I had was uh, Lizzie, come in and shut that door. Lizzie, come in and shut that door. Tell your boy it's hardly proper kissing you beneath the knocker. Lizzie, come in and shut that door. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Larry Grace. Did Larry Grace yeah. never hear that? Shut that door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was, it was all, it's, it's all a baton race, isn't it? It's handed down yes. to the next generation. Yeah. And I say some people sort of are forgotten like, along you know, the way, aren't they? Les Dawson never stopped talking about Frank Randall Evans. and Norman Evans. Of course, yeah. 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 No, they were his role models. Yeah. 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 I mean, Sid Field, another one who inspired Hancock and Walker and Wise yeah. and Tommy Cooper. But Sid didn't do telly. Died too young. The two films weren't too hot. Mm. Well, yeah. three films. He made a short. He made a short. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I was going to pick her up, but I wouldn't be so, yeah, so rude. But <laughs> yeah, two, two feature films. No, yeah. Sid yeah. Field but didn't get enough general exposure in that way. It was brilliant. Well, it was Tony Hancock's Idol. Yeah, but the classic overnight success was Sid Field after yeah. like 20 years of working the halls and whatever, yeah. and he suddenly made it into the West Being End. Been kept out of London. Yeah. No, and then died really. about a year later, didn't he? I mean, it yes. Was so sad. Brilliant. And somebody who worked with him said, uh, "Dear Sid, there was a grinding gear change. He switched from pints to." The large Scotch and whatever <laughs> when he made it, you know, bless yeah. him. And he, he suddenly thought he was only good when he'd had a few. Yeah. And the more he had, the worse yeah, he got. Somebody was talking about the day on the radio about him slumped in the wings, and this woman said, Oh my God, he's out of it. Yeah. And I said, Sid, you're on. And he went on. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Doctor Showbiz. It doesn't. Yeah. I don't advocate that. <laughs> but, uh, but Forgotten Heroes of Comedy all started from that night in Grove Park. In Grove Park, in, yes. When we were listening to Rodney Franco. You were playing those 78s. And, yeah. and when I said, because my dad had a record called um, I'm Just a Bear in a Lady's Boudoir, yeah. which was Rodney Franco, yeah. which was banned by the BBC. Yeah. And I think all, I did, I think I did a couple of yeah, Winnie the Worm. Yes. Winnie the Worm. They were all yeah. very sort of seductive. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. The bottom, and wasn't with it? Tommy Hanley, all those, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've got a, also a book here he wrote, which was a. A flag waver, yeah. anti-Nazi propaganda called "He's a Perfect Little Gentleman, the Swine" by Ronald Franco. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. He's a perfect little gentleman, yeah. the swine. Yeah. Hitler was a pig. Yeah. <laughs> so he was. I mean, he was doing all this stuff, you know, war effort stuff. But the BBC hated him. Oh, he was so okay. naughty. Yeah. But, um, it was it Laurie Taylor oh. in those days? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, don't walk past. I'm so no, sorry, sorry about this. You can't. You can't stop us. Come on, come on. Come on. It's, come on. It's, sorry. It's, it's, it's a free cabaret here for you. You're too <laughs> <laughs> polite. Sorry about that. No problem, no problem. You can be in this if you want to. Little cameo <laughs> here. No, I was the front of you. Well, I, I've got the record. Um, I hate vice. It isn't at all nice. Not to mention the horrible fact you've got to pay the price. When I see co rows of chorus girls wearing less than undies, it makes me think of whoopee times I've had on Aberdeen on Sundays, and I hate vice. <laughs> Your memory for oh, lyrics God, is amazing. Amazing. It's stunning. It's like a walking musical. Uh, no, I, I, I was Googling uh, on Franco, yeah. and I hadn't realised that he was so in innovative. Yeah. Um, uh, 
there's a song called uh, A Much Better Time When They're Naughty, and it's about girls. They have a much better time when they're naughty, so why do they try, try to keep good? The good girl likes the light on, and she hopes she'll have some luck. The bad girl turns the light out, and she hopes the man has pluck. And the voice comes out from the back, ending the song. That'll be enough, that'll do, that's enough. Stop it, stop it. Is he setting up a rhyme here? Yes. <laughs> and there's another, uh, what, what every girl ought to know, it just starts with, uh, now you needn't make the young people leave the room when you put this record on. <laughs> Because girls of 17 or less need no teaching, but confess they know it all. <laughs> oh, it's... Well, this was it, 14 years ago, yeah. and Terry said, why don't someone do a book yeah. called The Forgotten Heroes yeah. of Comedy? Oh, yeah, great. Well, do that book. So, I know, um, that point yes. up the fact that they all, the greats and the Max Millers and people, had to do double entendre and yeah. Yeah. Well, well, as far as they could go. Gus Elin. Yeah. Gus Elin, yeah. 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 another yeah. one, yeah. another one. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a great big shame. Yeah, the sheep fun. belong to was me. Was it houses in between? Oh, no, 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 that business. Yeah, the house in between. House in between all that, yeah. was him, wasn't it? And half a pint of ale, which I love. But yeah. this, this, uh, genius. But again, who knows Gus? He's saying my, my old Dutch, didn't he? Yeah, my old, yes, all mm -hmm. those, yeah. So, I mean, this is, you know, a, a big hero, Kenneth Williams. And yeah. all, you know, he loved yeah. his, old, his old West End musical people. But look at that. See? So yeah. he's into. It'll be Just remember it, uh, bumper fun, this book. Yeah. Lavish. The more, people, the more people play, yeah. so the more lavish it will be. Max Miller's remembered, um, isn't he? Oh, Max is, yeah. yeah that's, he's the one. George Roby, just about. Yeah, but the stuff he got away with. The, I, I heard it again the other day. I never heard it before. Yeah. Max Miller. Imagine this years ago. Yeah, he yeah. said, fella spoke to me in the street today. I didn't go with him. Now then, <laughs> that's all he said. And people go, oh, that's a bit strong. <laughs> But he knew that's as far as he could yeah, yeah. push yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember he got banned from the BBC for saying Moses of the It's a famous, you know, it's, it's yeah. the no, one they, on the pass, isn't it? You know, yeah, but the Max Miller Society are up in arms about oh, it. It's, it's not true. I can't imagine him saying that. Apocryphal. It's too coarse for him. It's yeah. more by Luxembourg or something. But the, the, the apocryphal story is that he told the gag about um, he's a hiker walking, you know, up the mountain somewhere. And he, the, the path is more narrow, more narrow, more narrow. And meets a young blonde walking yeah. towards him. And he didn't know whether to um, toss himself off or block her passage. <laughs> um, I knew it too much. Now then, was his grand. Now then. <laughs> they look into the into the wings when he see he's, the manager's there. Yeah. We, can't, we can't we can't do that one. <laughs> he's, to his, he's there he's in, a, in a wheelchair and a whip. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Uh, Good fellow said to his mate, "I'm getting married." He said, "You're getting married. You'll find out what's what." He said, "What do you mean?" He said, "You'll find out what's what." And he gets married and he's getting home from the pub and he takes his shoes off and he tiptoes up the stairs and he gets in the bed next to his wife. I mean, this is pretty strong stuff. And he's feeling around. He's feeling around. And he said, what's that? And his wife said, what's what? Now then! <laughs> That's all it was. And then he'd wait for the laugh and say, and there it was on the mantelpiece all the time. <laughs> they were surreal, these people. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wonderful. Brilliant people. So Not anybody, anybody else you think of that you would want in the book um, that, that, that you consider unsung, forgotten, right for reappraisal? You know. uh, but they had to have been real it, stars. It can't be that, Uncle Fred who made you laugh at Christmas. No, no, it's no, got to be no, someone no, professional. No, no, yeah. but, I mean, <laughs> and not Tom Menard, right. who was a brilliant comic, but he was never a star. Yeah, someone, someone, I remember him. Someone that made it. Um, well, even, even, yeah, even someone that was on the bill somewhere. But, you know. uh, Good question. Mm. You have, to you have ten minutes to think about it. <laughs> yes. Can I buy a round? <laughs> of course. Uh, I'll, 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 have you got to go? I'll stop here. Yeah, if we can go. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's all. No, you can't. No, I'll no, see you. No, once you're there, you can't go home. I want to hear. You. I'll see you later. I want to hear yeah, Terry sing him some more. Well, so do I. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Okay, Come on, Nancy. Bro. Rent a drunk track, Absolutely, wasn't yeah. he? He would, he, would, he would make like 25 films a year. Yeah. He'd one or two days. Do you know his background? I don't. No, he was just a, just a vaudevillian actor. No, I mean, did he drink? Oh, no, 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 he was sober. No. He was sober, no, no. He perfected this, like, this notion of, he always played the, the guy in the, in the top hat when he was all, a very sophisticated yes. drunk. Yes. A, a man about town drunk. And he would just walk on for one movie or one scene yeah. of the film. But the thing get about the last and walk I think a drunk is you do blah, blah, blah. Drunk, <laughs> I'm told. Oh, I, I Drunk speak yes. very carefully. Cheers. Very precisely. That's what the good ones mm. would do. They mm. speak very.
precise because they're trying to get the words out. They're trying to think which words they are don't the correct words. They necessarily, I'm generalising, but they don't necessarily go slower or slower. You know, they speak very carefully. So we were talking about the show The Comedians, mm. and one of the greats who just passed away sadly, who I think does count as a forgotten hero, is Ken Goodwin. Ken Goodwin, yes, and um, Charlie Williams. Yeah, another one. Another one. Who was, who was the, the black and, northern comedian who, yes, who was very and pioneering. Finished wasn't he? up doing the Golden Shot, and yeah. it wasn't his. Sadly, it wasn't his no. birth. No. Yeah. I suppose by Norman Vaughan is another one. I mean, he was Norman, a massive that's star, right. wasn't he? Massive star. And, you know, ladies, see? No reaction. I'm going to get Who? you. Who was the compere of the Palladium? Nobody at all remembers. Don Arrell. Oh, God. Really? Got you. No, don't, not on camera, are you bugger? <laughs> Don Arrell. See, they weren't, they weren't filming Boris Carter earlier, were they? One season of Palladium. I there Robert, and gone. Robert, Robert Morley did one episode, Norman Vaughan. Robert Morley did one. There and gone. Yeah. Don Arrell. Well... What, doing the golden shot as well? Yes, he yeah. was married. To, no, this is very interesting. <laughs> he was married to uh, a woman called Carol. She was Carol Arrell. <laughs> and she finished up marrying one of the King brothers. Isn't this interesting? <laughs> well, to her, maybe. Carol yeah. Arrell. Carol Arrell. No, Don Arrell, bless him. Who knows that name? Nobody. <laughs> He's in. I couldn't believe that Robert Morley did. Did one episode. Yes. Yeah. Did yeah. compare with Sunday Night's the Palladium. Really. It's like there was a show, now sadly lost from the archives, called Fred Emney Picks a Pop, where oh. Fred Emney... Who Fred was, Emney, there's Yeah, another, you know, the, the giant... Is Fred Emney involved? He's, of course he's in the book. Of course yes, he is. Of course he is. He's, uh, he's known probably for the, for the one line in the Italian job where he says, <laughs> bloody foreigners, yeah. as he's dropping the thing. That's it, you know. Well, but he did he, uh, Choke is Wild with us. Oh, of course, yeah. And Jack Douglas... Told, started telling a joke. We used to set it up, mm. and then you interrupt him, and all that went on. And suddenly, this Jack Douglas is telling a joke, and the buzzer went, and this woke me up. I thought, what's happening now? I said, Mr. Emney, interruption. Yes. Is this a joke about the seaside? I said, yes, it is. I live at Bognor Regis. Just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> and the audience were bewildered. The other comics fell off the seats. It was Fred Emney, you know. Just thought I'd mention. <laughs> and talking of Joke is Wild, I have something here. Yeah. One of the great forgotten heroes. Ray Martin. Ray Martin. East End, West End. Look at that. Duragon Pub and the establishment. Very good. Well done. Yes. Because Ray Martin was on almost every episode of Joke is Wild. Oh, he's... It was probably the worst joke teller of all time. Oh, he's... But yeah, he, he was... used to go to pieces in yeah. front of the camera, but But he had something, didn't he? He had something about it. But he was upfront gay comedian. I think yeah. the timing was wrong. Mm. I think a few years later, Ray would have been very big. Mm. Bless his heart, he was right up front. He was very fun. But he, he married a woman, didn't he? He married... I think it was Dorothy, a fan. Yes. Finished up living in Newcastle. Of he was places. speaking to me in Newcastle. <laughs> he gave up the business. He said it's not happening. Mm. And he always had a day job. He sold antiques. OK. OK. So he went back to selling antiques. Oh, he's funny. But how come he always got called back by Yorkshire TV? Because he was awful. But he was... I don't know. On every was. single show, or pretty much every single show. He was sort of charismatic awful. <laughs> I think you, it's like it made, made you look good, I think, Barry. That's what it was. Because you could jump in and get a, the a point for the chairman. <laughs> no, that's a good choice, Ray. Oh, no. no, the timing a, was wrong. He's I in think. a film he, called Primitive London, which you're also in. When he's, when he's seen... Yeah, they changed the title. I thought, what's this? Did they? It wasn't called Primitive London when we made it. What was it called? I can't remember. <laughs> it was just something boring, like... Focus on London, you know, something like that. And then Primitive London, they put other stuff in. But a new did inserts, action. yes, yeah. 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 Well, Ray's on camera uh, performing at the Establishment Club, doing his stuff there. Yes. And you're there trying to do some commercial venture. It's a very odd film. But, um, yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I played the director or the producer or something. Some didn't TV I? commercial, yeah, yeah. Very odd. Anyway, but Ray's Baker in. and Douglas, Joe Baker and Jack Douglas. Oh. See, Joe's another one, because Joe is, is the English Luke Costello in a way, isn't he? Yes. Do you think that's yeah. a fair point? Yeah. There's the sort of the fat stooge. I think I'm scoring the odd point here, no. <laughs> Baker and Douglas. Yeah, yeah. I love Jack. Bless his heart. He's a good lad. Finished up in Los Angeles doing old-time musical. 
and appearing on stuff like Hollywood Squares. Yes, yeah. Um, which is like sort of the, 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 the graveyard shift for once were famous people. But anyway, never mind. It's not Jack went on to do carry on films and of stuff. Of course, isn't it? yeah. And Jack lived a long life and on the Isle of Wight. <coughs> No, it just so seems suppose, a long life yeah, if you're exactly, on the other way. Exactly. So, Justin, do, do we, do, can, I, can I be self-indulgent now? I'm still on the other way. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, seem to have been there forever. And, and get, get Barry to say a few things of why I'm the right person to do this book. Can I, Wheeler. Jimmy Wheeler's another one. Is yeah. he in your book? He's on, the, he's on the list, yeah. Yeah, I've got a list. I've got a few with question marks by them. Did I tell you about <laughs> going on the breakfast train to Leeds with Jimmy Edwards? No. We had shared the same birthday. Okay. Not the same year. No, I'm going to say no. Of course and not. he used to call me the old whore, and I was younger than him because he said you're right for anybody. And uh, it's true, folks. We got on the train at King's Cross, 7:55, and Jimmy bellowed at me, "It's our birthday, dear! Champagne!" So we had our breakfast. We had our bacon and eggs and everything. And the steward is hovering, looking at Jimmy Edwards. You know. Mm. And Jimmy said, oh, eating our breakfast, we're going to have champagne for our joint birthday. And the steward couldn't stand it anymore and came up to the table and said, Champagne's ready when you want it, Mr. Wheeler. Jimmy Wheeler, another comic of the day. <laughs> to which Jimmy Edwards replied, You have just fucked my birthday. <laughs> That's going in. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have just bleeped my birthday. <laughs> yeah. no, true he, story, he, true his, story. His, his brother owned a farm. Down in Sussex, near, right. near Falkland. Fletchling. Yeah, near Fle yeah, Fletchling, that's it. And there's a pub there, which I've been into quite a lot. I've got friends around the area. And he was barred from the pub, Jimmy, because obviously he liked a few. Yeah. And um, I last knockings, me and my friend got three pints. We had our two, yeah. and we took one out and poured it on Jimmy's. I went to his funeral. Thing. Did you? With his agent. Anybody else? Uh, and of course, being our business, the, the pub was quite full of people who were going to the funeral. Mm. Apart from, no, I won't do this bit, shall I? Jimmy's boyfriend, an Australian lifeguard. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, Joan Turner. Oh, right, okay. They got engaged at one point. Ah, oh, okay. Have I said something you didn't know? <laughs> Again. This legendary lady, brilliant singer and everything, and they got engaged, but Jimmy meant it as a joke. Right. Being gay, of course. God bless him. Yes. Uh, but she took it seriously. And it broke her heart, mm. you know. A journalist asked him about this, so oh, you've got engaged, Mr. Redford, so oh, I've got, and all this went on. And uh, I went to the funeral with his agent to Fletchling, and uh, there was Joan Turner at the bar wearing a veil, a bottle of champagne, and one glass she wasn't offering. <laughs> it was so moving God. and sad, and yeah, I mean, it was a horrible era. I you think know, the way he should be in, you know, it was, a, it was a horrible era because it was like sexual McCarthyism. Hmm. You know, I think a generation now would say, oh, they were such hypocrites, they didn't come out. They'd have been ruined and probably gone to prison. It was a hideous Well, it was time. illegal until My friends, wasn't it, you know, my gay yeah. mates, they, of course yeah. they didn't come out, they'd have been ruined. That's why people like Marty Feldman and Barry Took wrote lovely Julian and Sandy for Kenneth Williams and... Julian and Sandy, that was some stuff. They were, they stuff. were chorus boys, but they were, they were flagrantly camp. And yeah. But they could get away with that on a Sunday lunchtime, couldn't superb. they? superb. You know, that was just... No, we've talked about this mm, before, haven't yeah. we? And the mandarins at the BBC didn't really... Or one or two of the mandarins probably did know what it was about and weren't letting on. All this Polari and the chat and all that was going Bona. on. One of Bona. Bona. Bona Lati Eking South. Lovely flat facing south. I always remember that. Johnny and it was subversive. Yes. Yeah. Subversive. It was brilliant. Well, the, the Ging show, the same thing. But both Martin and Brian Barry, of course, had worked yeah. in shows, and, and not as you, had of I. Have you often, this is the Jimmy Woolley, Jimmy Woolley. Yeah, you had gay, gay mates in the chorus. Uh, women had the good deal in the law because gay women weren't covered by the law. Mm. Uh, men had the hard deal. And I'm delighted for the, the women who couldn't be prosecuted. That's good. Uh, but it was, it was an awful era. But we, we worked in musicals and shows where yeah. you knew all your mates in the chorus and you heard all this balari, oh, bona, bona, and all that. And uh, suddenly it was on radio and it was a, to a, a big audience listening to the radio. It was yeah, fascinating. Yeah. But when you think it's less than 50 years ago that you could be arrested and put in prison for being gay, I mean, it's just... Ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, it's hideous. That's the that's the the genius of comedy. You can get a, around those. Well, you know, man, 
Bob Monkhouse story, I'm going to tell it, because Bob, oh, yes, Bob perjured himself in the High Court. Because uh, Liberace sued the Daily Mirror, mm. the lovely Bill Connor, who wrote under the name of Cassandra, who'd never seen Liberace work, wrote this hideous article about this slimy, mother-loving load of... It was hideous. And it was like sort of Oscar Wilde and Liberace sued. And it went to the High Court. And Bob Monkhouse, who got to know Liberace, stood up in the High Court and said, my friend Lee is not homosexual. And he said, it was a lie. I purged it mm. and got away with it. But he did it for a friend. And mm. You can't imagine it now. It was hideous. Yeah, dreadful. Like, I say sexual McCarthyism. Yeah. yeah. Name names. Yeah, exactly. Horrible. Exactly. Ugh. Oh, well, anyway. Oh, well, on my soapbox, sorry. Yes, get off you. What have you got there? Oh, I'll show you. I've got a few little goodies here from my, my personal collection. Oh, hold on, let's see. Talking about Sid Field earlier, look at that. Yeah. Then Tony Hancock Haywide. did a David Frost show, mm. and uh, we used to do three nights a week. And Tony was on, and uh, Frosty said at some point, who did you admire, and all that. And Tony Hancock started rhapsodising about Sid Field. And he went on so much and so entertainingly, David said, can you come back tomorrow night? And he came back two nights running and talked about uh, Sid Field. He yeah. just idolised him. And if you watch Sid Field, you can see something there. There's something about Hancock there, the doleful face and the... It's there. Yeah, he's a great, great character comedian. And also, I mean, he did, he did Harvey. Pick it. Look at that. Look at that. Before James Stewart did the sad film I version. know people on here. Oh, you do? I knew people, I should say, sadly. But I've got one here dated... 19th of February, 1949, Prince of Wales Theatre, when he was in Harvey. Yes, did Elwood Harvey. P. Dowd. Yeah, yeah. Which was great for him, because obviously he was this yeah. drunken... James who Stewart did Harvey the film yeah, as well. After that. After no, that, he did it on oh, the stage yeah, briefly, yeah, but yeah. Sid Field did it. But, but Sid, who was oh, a drunk, drunken, playing a man who could see a seven-foot white rabbit, yeah. was great casting. Don't yeah. give me this, I'll no, run I'm off with it and steal it. <laughs> That's wonderful. And Al Reed. No, it's Al. Al Reed. Uh, I'll see in. your book. He's in. Yes, definitely. Ah, Al Reed and Bob Newhart. Yes. You know that? Go on, tell the story. <laughs> I'm so, I get so arrogant <laughs> when I do something. And he, uh, there was a Radio Four did a an Al Reed program, <coughs> Four Extra, uh, which wasn't an Al Reed show. It was clips, mm -hmm. and with interspersed commentary about Al from people who knew him. And Al Reed in America met Bob Newhart. Now the timing of this story, you don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg. Mm. Al Reed used to do a driving instructor and they played it on the radio, which was brilliant. No, 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 you're on the traffic island and all this went on. And allegedly Al Reed met this man, Bob Newhart. You know what Bob made of this and they got on fine. Mm -hmm. And allegedly, Al Reed did a bit of his driving instructor to Bob Newhart. <laughs> now, which came first? Was Bob Newhart already doing a driving instructor? or? And I, I bow to nobody in my admiration of Bob Newhart, obviously. Brilliant. I mean, Al man. Reed was first, you know, because he was doing You wonder, it. you yeah. know, isn't yeah. it interesting? This Lancastrian like Englishman is yeah. talking to this American and does a bit of driving instructor. But for Al Reed, it was comedy was almost like a, a second career because he was a potted meat it, sausages and genius. Pies. Wasn't he? he made a fortune, didn't he? Yeah, out of that. But, oh, we um, can't have people who've got a proper day job. No. <laughs> no, you either come in or you don't. Now stop so it. But the observation of those northern women and, the, and oh. it was just spot on, wasn't it? it was and you could have sworn I don't think the the rig that. He could have sworn he was interrupting himself sometimes. He could do There were scenes when, 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 when the wife was himself. calling off from the kitchen. Yes, and he was doing that whole, that's the wife from the kitchen. The whole voice. What yeah. I've forgotten was his bolshy kid in the doctor's oh, waiting room. Dad, 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 dad. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, look at that fat man over there, dad. <laughs> look at that fat man. He's going to fight him, dad. He's going to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, dad? He's in, he's in. Why have you gone red, dad? We've got enough now. <laughs> <laughs> We could go on all day here, couldn't we? Oh, but, uh, dear. Oh, I love these. Good. Definitely, yes. Ken Platt, yes. The pocket George Formby. Oh, and, uh, look at God. that. But look how young Eric is there. Holy man. Oh, dear. This is 1954, I think. No, 53. Where did he get this stuff? 
to find it in collectors' fairs and eBay. Mm. Plug, you plug, browse and, about. Uh, well, you can do I, eBay. I do. I, 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 I just, you know. But isn't that beautiful? What? Isn't it beautiful? Look at that. I, I thought should, you were should, giving me it. I, should, no, I was no, going to no. run off. No, with no, it. you can't have this. No. I'll find you a copy for Christmas. I will mug you. You I'll know that. <laughs> if I get two drunk bags, you can, you know, just steal my bag later. Ken Platt. Bloody yeah. mentioned it. Oh, I love Ken Platt. Another, another great people. You must be the world to live. <laughs> <losing> <laughs> so, those names. No, Who are these people? Who are these no, old people no, talking not, about? No, not. Well, these be two signed photographs of Ronald Franco, the man who started it all. Yes. Uh, two old pros in the business in, this, in Spain, and they come across a statue of Franco. <laughs> What's it? Oh dear, Ronald. <laughs> he was pretty risque, wasn't he? Was. He? he was. He was. He was a, a real cheeky. But to look yeah. at him, he, he was. He was a very wealthy. Uh, he was born to a, to a very wealthy family, but he was. Um, oh, no, he was a toff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, gent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. From the from the Raj. Different age. Age, isn't it? But he was this. Saucy. Now we just have tops who are prime ministers. Yeah, They're not comics. Not, and not funny. Well, not funny in, in, the, in the good <laughs> sense of the word. No, but, uh, no, great. So, so in a way, Ronald Franco is, oh is God, the, you're wonderful. the, the patron stop. saint of this book, really. So yeah, he's definitely going in. So look at that. So, look at this. You can get a bit close there, chummy. <laughs> he's the boy. And the double act. With Tommy the two Bradley. of them, I mean, it's yeah, yeah. Scouts are comic and they've become friends, haven't they? And the, but you see, then again, is Tommy wonderful. Hanley forgotten? Because Tommy Hanley was Nitmar, the biggest radio show Legend. of the 40s. But is he, is he now? now? He no, was, no, no, I wouldn't have thought. No, no. He's in your book. Well, I, he's, again, borderline, but I mean, you know. I, the great thing, what we should do this. I don't know. I mean, Hanley on the radio in the Second <laughs> yeah. World War yeah. uh, was arguably running third to Winston Churchill. J.B. Priestley, and Lord who did the postscripts. Oh, and Lord Haw Haw, <laughs> all right, fourth. No, Handley was massive, and when he died, there were five deep on the pavement. Absolutely, like a state he funeral. died in 1949, it was a state funeral. But I was a, a child in the uh, Second World well, this may surprise you. I was a child in the Second World War, and it was just an institution. Hmm. You could walk down the street at night on a summer day like today, and windows were open, and all you heard on the radio was hit mark Tommy Handley's. Every radio seemed to be turned on to this man. Mm. He was an institution. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Point for the for the cryo here? Oh, just the one. Just, just the one. I'm deeply offended. And we'll talk about we'll talk about how he how the, oh, uh, the pledging. Yeah, me too. Me too. Singles on the What did I say when I scored papers? Papers.